G'day guys, we're back and we have a brand new spigot thanks to Direct Clutch Services. So Matt and Drew from uh, Direct Clutch sent me these. Well actually Matt did, so thanks Matty. And um, yeah, we're gonna see if these fit into the back of the crank straight away uh, so we can get cracking and get this RPM3 running again. So as you can see, I have not cleaned this up, uh, but I will and then um, yeah, that's filthy still. My bad. So yeah, I'll do my normal uh, oiling of the spigot. Like, I, if you guys have missed it, I'll show you again real quick. All right, guys, you just get any any old uh, engine oil. Here's the spigot. And you just fill it. Like, obviously, put your thumb underneath it. Fill her up. Come on. Alright, so obviously it's overflowing. And then you just grab the top and you squeeze it. Until you see it come through the pores. I did that really bad because uh obviously soaked it. But yeah, I could see it's coming through the pores, so that's um well and truly ready to go. <laughs> and then the excess you just chuck onto a rag. I really stuff that up. The spigot's all good to go. All right guys, so now uh, the fun bit, putting it in the crank without wrecking it. Now you don't want to deform uh, the actual spigot itself. So you have to find something to hit it with that's got the exact same uh, circumference and um, it'll sit dead flush with it so I've always used these extensions and um, yeah never really had an issue and softly and then you just hit it till it's flush Ripper. So now she's in there, uh, and I'll just test uh, the gearbox input shaft. So obviously make sure that, because obviously that thrust crushes a little bit. So you just need to make sure the actual diameter doesn't close in too far, and then the input like, shaft is hitting it, or you know it's too tight. You need it to be close. So um, yeah. It's, it's gonna be fine and we're back in business so Whew. time to put the direct clutch back on yeah use a tiny bit of brake cleaner to get it all clean again so thankfully my buddies at direct clutch in case you don't know their logo that's it right there uh, they make this really simple to install the clutch and if you do have any issues they have ridiculously good customer service. Anyway, uh, they got little stickers on here. I'm surprised that hasn't actually melted off yet. So, wherever they're getting them from, they're bloody good. <laughs> so, flywheel side, that obviously goes on the flywheel side. Just like that. Uh, then the first plate, I've actually got them all marked. Uh, so when I pull them off, I mark them. I'm sure they've got markings on them when you get them. It's probably not um, heaps crucial, but I always make sure they come off and on the exact same way. Uh, so there will also be a mark on the flywheel. It's down here. So that one goes in like that. Then there's the next plate. And this one has a sticker as well. It says pressure plate. That one's obviously sitting out. You can always just double check to make sure nothing's hitting. So what's it say? Then the next plate, because this one is a twin plate clutch, there's the marking. So that one goes down. And the other one is 
And then last but not least, the pressure plate. And that will sit in like that. However, before you put this on, you need to put the bolt in first. And they supply three washers to start with when the clutch is brand freaking new. It's so tiny, you can't even really tell that there's three washers there. But anyway, um, they give you these three washers. And as the clutch wears over time, you can take washers out. Uh, I can't remember the exact measurement, but it's on their website. You just got to measure from when this is fully or done up on the back of the clutch. You measure where the fingers sit compared to the outer surface here of the pressure plate. I'm pretty sure that was right, uh, but everything's on their website. So go to the description below if you're after a clutch like this, uh, direct clutch. They'll help you out with everything you need. You just pretty much ring them up, tell them what you're going to be needing a clutch for and yeah. They'll help you along the whole process. So, what I do is I put all the bolts in. Obviously, make sure that these bolts have got their washer on them as well. And I'll put the three on the outside. I've got them all separated at the bottom here. You guys can't see it, but just double check, triple check that you actually have three of those each like washers on each one because even though they're tiny uh if you get two on a couple and three on a you know you'll wear your cl clutch out unevenly so no one wants that anyway that's all good to go now all the washers are on um and he's got to line it up wherever my boy Make sure you do not lose those damn washers. Then the most important bit is doing it up evenly. So obviously, do it all up finger tight to begin with. Uh, and before you do tighten that up, guys, just give that a wriggle to make sure it is, is in there right. Uh, this is just your um, locating. Oh, I don't even, I can't remember what it's called. God, I haven't. Gonna... Big memory blank. But um, it just locates the discs so they're dead straight. And when you put the gearbox on, you don't have any issues. Anyway, just give it a wriggle, make sure it's all good. Uh, slide it in and out if you have to. Obviously don't slide it all the way out because they'll drop. This isn't done up yet. Um, and then yeah, all I do is a quarter of a turn each one. Uh, you should basically do it like a wheel if you want to be really fussy. But yeah, as long as it goes on even, um, should be all good because these fingers have got to go up and be dead level with each other. So I'm gonna do that. So now that that's all done up, uh, you should be able to slide this straight in and out. So the gearbox will have no issues going straight on. Uh, so yeah, now we'll do the slave. Make sure that's all measured up sweet. So what we do here is basically measure from the flat part of the pressure plate here uh, and see how deep those fingers are from the plate. So that should be like, I think 11 mil. Uh, and then we measure from the back of the block with this plate on. Don't forget that guys, even though I didn't take the flow off. But from there, to the face of this. So you just use some straight rollers, pretty simple. Uh, you get that measurement and then you go and measure the gearbox. So we'll do that straight away. Uh, I've been playing around with the hydraulic release bearing on this. I actually, um, believe it or not, it was really strange because this is a genuine Tilton hydraulic slave and the holes were actually a little bit different. Uh, the way it was laid out compared to the last one. So I actually had to drill and tap some new ones and it's turned out a lot better with the way the bleed system is on here. Long story short, I, yeah, moved this around a bit um, and just got the right measurements all set up. Um, so I've explained this in another video before, but you pretty much measure from 
the flat surface of the gearbox as you can see here uh, and then another roller to measure from where the slave sits fully compressed in uh, to the flat point so obviously one ruler there I can't do it with two hands I need three it's so one ruler there one there measure exactly what it is uh, and it turned out to be 84 mil uh, from the block and I gotta get this long story short 84 mil 77 uh, 7 mil clearance and that is what direct clutch wanted because I wear these clutches out so quick so that distance will turn into 4 or 5 mil before you know it <laughs> Uh, which is pretty optimum, like 4 mil is usually what um, they would recommend uh, but in my case because I wear the thing out all the, like so quick um, yeah we opted for 7 mil so that's what that is and I'm not really going to go any further tonight um, I could put the gearbox on and then start shimming it in the car but it's already it's already, uh, it's already pretty late, so, um, and yeah, obviously still have a day job. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so yeah, I work, yeah, I'll start work at six in the morning, so it's pretty much what it is. This video will get chopped into two days, sorry guys, and then hopefully once this is all rolling again, I can uh, do my best to maybe get videos out every second day, but the dream is every day. We'll, uh, Keep pushing for that, but um, yeah, good progress tonight, I reckon. I'm just double checking, triple checking uh, everything and making sure we don't have to pull this out again. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow in the same video. <laughs> See ya. What's up, guys? It's the following day now, and uh, I just got back here after work. And honestly, I am just going to chuck the gearbox straight on the back of the engine, and I'm going to hoof the strut like just straight in there i'm uh i'm not gonna film it time lapse or anything because you guys have seen me pull this thing in and out that many freaking times um but one thing i do have to do is uh, drill a few holes put some nut certs in a few little like intricate things that are just boring and i don't really want to show you guys but yeah once the engine's in we'll be back so um i'm just gonna crank some tunes and just get cracking on this because I need this car running ASAP for a very good reason and you guys will find out soon. Alright, we'll be back in a sec. Ta -da! It's not finished but uh, it's pretty damn close. Everything's done uh, like bolted in wise. I've just got to run the uh, intercooler piping and a bit of the electrical stuff so not much to go, but it's getting pretty late and I have to start work early in the morning as usual. So I'm going to try and get some sleep because I have something cool happening, not tomorrow, but the day after. And uh, you guys are going to be coming with, so that's going to be freaking wicked. I just got to make sure this thing's all sweet, which it will be. Um, but yeah, I'm all packed up. And one thing, even though I'm not completely finished, I don't know if it's a pro tip, but... Uh, Everything's packed away. I'm not gonna show you because my tools are junk, but all I'm saying is, every time I finish up for the day, I put all the tools back. So, uh, there's never a worry about if you've left one stuck somewhere, and you never lose your 10 mil that way. But uh, I have lost the 12 mil ratchet spanner. Oh, it happened like a year ago. I don't know what happened there. I think it was on a road trip or something. It's gone missing. So I'll wrap it up there guys, and we'll be back tomorrow with this thing running. See you guys.